In this video, I'm going to show you three different styles and types of photo journals which students have sent in over the past year. And so this first one is an eScience 8 photo journal and it is titled Working Hard or Hardly Working, Six Simple Machines That Help You Get Things Done. And here she explains what is work and gives us the terminology and some important information that is required or will be useful for our knowledge about uh, work and her simple machines. And she sums it up with there are six common devices that make work easier and they are called simple machines. And she gives a fun fact here as well. So two or more simple machines put together is called a compound machine. And here if she wanted, she could have given us a small picture, perhaps, of a, a compound machine picture that she had taken. Types of simple machine. There are six common simple machines. The wheel and axle, the pulley, the lever, the inclined plane, the wedge, and the screw. And she has these in order so that you know where you're going here because she's numbered her figures as well. Uh, good details there. And then she explains each of the um, simple machines. And I'm just going to show you one page where she explains it now and brings it to more, uh, gives us more detail. So a wedge is like a very small inclined plane. However, instead of using the flat surface, you use the pointed sharp edge to push things apart or to cut things. A common wedge is an ax. Flat-headed screwdrivers and knives are also wedges. Most wedges are flat, but they can be rounded as well. Nails, knitting needles, and even your two front teeth are types of wedges. So I like that she brought this to life here for us. Perhaps if she wanted, she could have shown even here in this space uh, those two front teeth or some knitting needles or some nails even. And then uh, she had many photos and you noticed on that one page she had figures one to six. And here she tells us uh, what they were and where the picture was taken and the date that they were taken on. And that's part of the rubric for the photo, photo journal that you tell us where and when the photos were taken and that you give us some information about each photo. So um, this was at the end of her entire project. And then she also includes how she built her PowerPoint. So we have another style, that style of photo journal here. And um, this one is uh, titled Signs of Erosion in Borland Creek. And it was created November 22nd, 2012. So it gives an introduction. Borland Creek is only a five minute walk from my house. Borland Creek is a nice creek to have in the neighborhood because there are great cliffs and nice rock formations. I enjoy walking there because it is a peaceful walk and I feel like I am in a different place. It is a good place to take pictures for the photo journal because there are lots of super signs of erosion. So it gives us an in introduction. And, and I this white page kind of makes me really think, wow, what what's going to come? Especially when I think about what the the title page here was then I'm like what's coming and he left this one blank it was quite I think a neat style there the tree roots um, so he did have a few I've skipped a few pages I haven't given you all of the pages of his photo journal but this I've shown some good examples of how he has pictures which fully uh, demonstrate the text or the text fully demonstrates the pictures that he's taken, whichever way he worked. The tree roots are exposed because the dirt has eroded. In the spring, the water gets high and washes the dirt away. So he explains eroded here. If the water keeps doing that and the dirt keeps washing away, then the tree will eventually collapse because its roots have nothing to hold on to. 
This tree has fallen because the roots were exposed and the dirt kept washing away. The water gets high and then the water recedes or goes down and every year it does this, more dirt goes with the stream. So the tree roots eventually have nothing to hold on to. An excellent picture with a slight skiff of snow. And then in the spring, the water gets high and covers the banks, so the bank starts eroding, leaving the tree roots exposed and smaller rocks start to slough off, but the bigger rocks stay. So you can see how the smaller rocks are sloughing and uh, ending up in the stream bed, and the bigger rocks here do stay. You can see sediment at this time of year, fall, because the creek is moving at a slow pace. In the spring, you cannot see the sediment as easily because the creek would be too deep and it would be moving too fast. Sediment are particles such as sand, silt, and clay, which are carried by the waters of a river or stream. And so here you can see the sediment, which he is talking about. And you can see that the stream is quite low at this fall time of year. And I don't think I'm going to keep reading it for you, but you can see that he has text that complements the, the photo that he's chosen to show. And here as well. Thousands of years ago, there was a big river running through the valley. The cliffs on the trail in the neighborhood are pretty big, so the river must have been huge and really deep. But now it is a small creek. Over many years, the river formed those cliffs by eroding the banks. So again, showing erosion with cut banks. And these are some other, some of the other rock and sand formations that have formed over many years. And here he could have, if he wanted, explained and described the rock formations a bit more. These rock formations are in the shape of hoodoos right here. They are not rock yet, but they could turn into rock over many years. And this one here that uh, still a tree on. And at the end of his work, I didn't show you the conclusion or the very end of his book, but um, he does have a bibliography correctly formatted as well at the end. And remember that you can find that correct uh, formatting in the research section of eScience on the main page. There's a creating a bibliography formatting page or download. And then a third photo journal, uh, the formatting or presentation style, which this student has used, um, makes it come to life in a different manner as well by uh, how she's added in her text. So water cycle photo journal, and I took out her name here. Uh, have you ever wondered where water comes from? Solid, liquid, gas, and so on. And she set the timing, so I was talking there and we missed a little bit of it. But you could see the photos and how she's uh, created um, or put her PowerPoint together. And you can uh, read up on PowerPoint and formatting uh, with PowerPoint, either Google it, or um, you can phone and we can talk about how to do these different uh, types of uh, formatting. And I'm just letting you watch. It's quite interesting the way the uh, pictures come in. And notice that the text Minimal text to describe the pictures, but then explanation over on the side. And then she gives a conclusion here, along with the river melting. There should be another part of the water cycle. She thinks it should be called the Big Spring Melting Time. And in Vanderhoof here, which this is the Nechaco River, uh, we do have a Big Spring Melt. And so the next video that will be presented is uh, on photo journals, which you can use to uh, demonstrate or show what you know for other projects in both eScience and Social Studies 8. 
you can use the photo journal format for many of our assign uh, of our projects so enjoy once again